milli equivalence calculations. And the question actually states that the potassium phosphate injection contains a mixture of 224 milligrams of monobasic potassium phosphate and 236 milligrams of dibasic potassium phosphate per milliliter. If 10 milliliters of the injection are added to 500 milliliters of D5W, which is 5% dextrose in water for injection, A, how many milli equivalents of potassium, and B, how many millimoles of total phosphate are represented in the prepared solution? So, one of the things that we actually need is to be able to identify what is important here. What you have is a potassium phosphate in injection. So it would be useful to actually know a few things. And the first thing we actually need is some information that was not included in the question. Because knowing that information would allow us to solve the question very quickly. And so once we use that piece of information, I'll show you the fastest way, and then we can go ahead and look at a more convoluted process. So the information that was missing is actually the millimoles of phosphate and the milli equivalents of potassium per ml. Right. So for this kind of um, preparation, what you need actually is to have three millimoles of phosphate per ml and four milli equivalents of potassium per milliliter. Now that will help a lot because we can then reduce this question to a very simple exercise. So let's go ahead and take a look at how you would actually solve this question. So for A, it says how many milli equivalents of potassium. Now from the information I just showed you, we have 4.4 milli equivalents of potassium in each milliliter and the preparation is asking for a 10 ml solution to be added to the bag and so that's where all your potassium would be and so the thing we can do is to set up a proportion to determine how many milli equivalents will be present in the 10 ml so now we can solve for our unknown, which is x. And so x equals 4.4 milli equivalents divided by 1 milliliter times 10 milliliters. The milliliters cancel out, and you end up with 44 milli equivalents. So that's how you will solve the part A. Now for part B, we can do something fairly similar. And that would be to make use of the information that we have three millimoles of phosphate in each milliliter. Once again, what you have is a 10 milliliter volume. So we need to figure out how many millimoles would actually be in the 10 milliliter volume. So we can go ahead and solve for the unknown here, which would be y. And that will be equal to the 3 millimole divided by the 1 milliliter times 10 milliliters. The mls cancel out. And you end up with 30 millimole. So that's the fast way to do it. That's the expeditious way to do it. Now, assuming you didn't have that information, you could still have done it from first principle, but that would be a little bit more involving. So I'll go ahead and show you how that would look like. And then you can compare the two approaches and you decide which one you would like to use. All right, so alternatively, what we could have done is 
use the masses that have been given. Now, for that to work, you need to know a few things. So let's just start off with A. And for part A, we will first start with the monobasic potassium. So let's start off with the KH2PO4, and that will be monobasic potassium. So the first thing we can do is determine what the valence is. And so this compound in an aqueous environment would dissociate to a potassium cation and then the phosphate. So the valence is actually going to be the absolute of either charge on the ion. So either absolute of positive one or the absolute of negative one. But either way, the valence is going to be one. And the reason we need the valence is because we are going to be using the equation milliequivalence is equal to weight in milligrams divided by the molecular weight times the valence. So we know what the valence is. The other thing that we need is the molecular weight for the monobasic potassium phosphate. So molecular weight is going to be equal to 136.08. And the other thing that we need now is the quantity in milligrams. So we have 224 milligrams per milliliter, and we are given a total of 10 ml, which will imply that the amount that you have is going to be equal to 224 milligrams divided by 1 milliliter times a 10 ml. And that is equal to 2,240 milligrams. So we can now put all of this in the equation. So MEQ is equal to 2240 divided by 136.08 times 1. And that should be equal to 16.46 milli equivalent. We can go ahead and do the same thing for the dibasic potassium phosphate. So here we'll have K2HPO4. And when you put this in an aqueous environment, you end up with two potassium cations and you have the phosphate. Okay? So the valence is the absolute of the charge on the cation or the absolute of the charge on the anion. So it could be either absolute of two times positive one, which would be positive two, or the absolute of negative two, which is also two. So the valence of the compound is two. The other piece that we need is going to be the molecular weight. The molecular weight for the dibasic potassium phosphate is actually 174.18. And now we need a quantity. So we have 236 milligrams in a milliliter, and we are given a volume of 10 milliliters. So that would imply that you have 236 milligrams per milliliter times the 10 ml, and then you have 23 60 milligrams. So you can now go ahead and put that information into the equation. So MEQ is going to be equal to 2360 divided by 174.18 times the valence. Now notice that the valence is actually 2 here. And we end up with 27.1 milli equivalents. So to answer part A, we need to add the milli equivalents from the dibasic potassium phosphate and the milli equivalents of potassium from the monobasic. 
So total is going to be equal to the 16.46, which is from here, plus the 27.1, which is from the diabasic. Now, when you add these two numbers, you end up with 43.56 milli equivalents, and that's approximately 44 milli equivalents. So if you compare this to the earlier solution, it's about the same. Now let's see how this will work for the part B. Now for part B, what you have is the millimoles of the phosphate. So what we can do is we can make use of the equation milli equivalent is equal to millimole times valence. So if we solve for the millimoles, we can make millimole the subject of the equation, which would be MEQ divided by valence. And what it is is we'll make use of the stoichiometry in the equation. So that's why I said this approach gets a little bit convoluted and it's easier to use the first approach that I showed you. So the first thing we can do is start off with the monobasic phosphate and the moles of potassium to the moles of the phosphate is actually one is to one. So one and one. Now what that implies is that if we use the equation, then the milli equivalence we obtained was 16.46, which is equal to the millimoles which we are looking for, and the valence here is one. So the millimole is gonna be equal to 16.46 divided by one, which gives us 16.46 millimoles. So that's the millimoles of phosphate that you would get from the monobasic potassium phosphate. We need to do a similar thing for the dibasic potassium phosphate. And so I'm just gonna move up a little bit. And so for the diabasic, what we have is a similar scenario. But now notice that the ratio, the stoichiometry is we have two moles of potassium and one mole of the phosphate. And that will become important once we do the computation. So we have for the potassium, to the phosphate we actually have a ratio of 2 is to 1 so what that means is we are going to use the milli equivalence of the potassium to find out what the millimoles is and then we have to make the adjustment later on and so what that looks like is we will take the 27.1 which we calculated being equal to the millimoles so we are using the same equation here times the valence which was 2 and so the millimole is going to be equal to 27.1 divided by 2 which is actually 13.55. So the total phosphate, and I need some real estate, so I'm going to scroll down. The total phosphate is going to be equal to the 16.46 from here. Plus the 13.55 millimole. And that should give you 
30.01 or approximately 30. So once again, if you compare this answer to the earlier approach that I showed you, you get about the same answer. So just to recap, the approach that we use at the beginning is much more simpler and that's the recommended approach. But if you wanted to do it from first principle, this is how it would look like. So if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try and get to them as soon as I see them. And if you like this kind of live interactive session, just put that in the comment as well and I'll try and do it very frequently. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.